Rokewood on the way, about an hour into the drive, just checking out all the bits and pieces, make sure everything's still good. Check inside as well, just to make sure it's um, all still sitting where it should. Um, just checking the temperature on these hubs. That one's about 50 degrees, which is typically what it gets to. I think it's all right. Check those wheel nuts too, after the last little incident. And that one's at 50 as well. I think that's acceptable. They feel a bit warm to touch, but I think it'll be all right. Just checking what's going on. Obviously no solar coming in, PV zero watts, because the battery's at 100%. So she was pretty close to full when I left, and obviously the car throwing some um, amps back into the van's been, has kept it topped up. So I might chuck some stuff in this oven and uh, heat it up so we can have some lunch on the way. Hold on for an hour. Go and grab some pies out of the fridge and chuck them in. some dirty bird left over from dinner last night so we'll chuck that in as well. Bit of a situation developed. I saw it in the rearview mirror. The screws have let go on the bottom of this and it's just um, pulling off so I'm gonna have to pull the screws and punch a bolt through into the inside I think. So anyway I'm gonna fix it. Thankfully I had uh, a bolt with a nylock nut and, a nut and a washer that was long enough to go through the wall, which is going to hold it, but I'll have to obviously firm that up with something better later on. I noticed there's a hardware store on the way out of this town, so I might pop in and see if they got something better, but that'll hold it on until we get to camp, I reckon. Just stopped at a little lake where I grew up, actually, home to high school on this lake, Lake Bolac. There's killer mosquitoes here that... Uh, trying to attack us not sure we'll be staying you know there's another one campsite around that side which i might go and check out and um if it's any good we might stay a couple of nights because i want to get a boat fired up and it's a good lake to have a boat on um the bloke we we're going to go to rocklands reservoir on the other side another couple of hours another hour and a half away is is um full of trees dead trees and it's a bit sketchy but I was willing to give it a go, but if we can get a decent campsite here against the river, then I might stay here a couple of nights, then move on later on. See how we go. Woody seems keen. Boom.
we pulled up to the next little campsite. It's not too bad. The road's just there, but it's, it's a dead end road, so not much traffic. Um, and it's a little bit boggy around, but I reckon this is good. We'll just go straight there. I've just um, faced the van this way, so I can put the awning on this side, and we can have views of the lake. But um, it means my roof isn't facing north, which means I won't get much sun on there. But uh, we'll only be here a few days, a couple of days, and um, it's got a great little beach just here for boat launch. Perfect. Look at that. Couldn't be better. Just roll it down and into the water. So yeah, let's get that going and see what happens. So I thought I'd just do a quick, quick uh, setup, um, and I'll time lapse it and time it um, and see how long she takes to get up and running with the awning out and the roof up and off the hitch and everything. So I'll just chuck it on tripod and we'll go from there. Forgot to mention teenagers in the car because they're scared of mosquitoes. These things are actually like horses. I just put some uh, Bushmans on and uh, they seem to be staying at bay, but they're incredible. I've never seen anything like them. <laughs> I don't even know if they're mosquitoes, they're too big. Anyway, we will have to endure through that. I'll get the fire going and hopefully a bit of smoke will keep them away. All right, I'm not gonna rush this. I'll just see how long it takes if I'm just cruising. Uh, she's not quite level as you can see, so I'm gonna just bring the front up off the hitch and then it should be good. Yeah, so that's about it. it. Took about seven minutes, I think, uh, maybe eight. Um, obviously, need to put some pole um, guy ropes down. I'll do that now as well. But that's it, pretty ready to roll. I could have put the leg stabilizers down as well. Might just leave them up. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and I haven't really leveled it properly. I haven't because the, the um, levels in my phone, so I couldn't do it because I'm filming with my phone. So yeah, but that's pretty much it. There's a bit of wind around, so I might just get some guy ropes on those poles now and. Call it done. It's actually like deafening. Are they mosquitoes? I don't know. Just got some of these uh, anchors, they call it easy anchors from uh, Anaconda. They're um, driving me with a special bit, which I'll probably lose very quickly, but haven't lost it yet. So that's how they work. Um, just punch them in, they've got a big thread on them. Really easy, quite like it. Yeah, so someone forgot the axe, which wasn't good. Um, we're gonna have to improvise and let's get on to the old fire chef from Osbury. He gave me these knives, how good are they? Even got my name engraved on them. I've got a few of them now. Very good for slicing the tip of your finger off, but also good hopefully for slicing up a bit of kindling. We'll see how we go. Oh, boom, boom. How good's that? Dinner option tonight, we're going to do the butterfly lamb leg. 
one of the Woolworths jobbies. A bit smaller than I'd anticipated. Uh, three large lads, probably not going to cut it, but we'll make some souvlakis up, I reckon. I've got some flatbread in there and a bit of salad and gear, so we'll just uh, do this over the fire and hopefully that's enough to satiate everyone. We'll see how we go. Growing lads need to bulk it out a bit, so I've got some carb, just a bit of this uh, microwave uh, rice, which I, because I can. So I've got to get the microwave fired up. Let's go with a bit of AC mode on. Should go beep in a second. There it is. So what's this one looking at? What do we want? In the microwave, squeeze pouch. Tear a two centimeter opening, heat it for 90 seconds. First time the microwave has been used, see how she goes. Oh, don't want mosquitoes in there. 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds. That's the way to do it. What's the microwave pulling? It's pulling 1100 watts. Alrighty, let's get these uh, flatbreads sorted. Go and grab the lamb. Mmm, looking pretty good. Pretty bloody good. I think it needs a bit of beer as well. Yeah. It needed beer for sure. All right, because I'm so disorganized, I brought nothing other than tomato sauce as a condiment. So I'm gonna have to roll with a bit of tomato on top, which isn't that exciting. Let's see how the rice turned out. Interesting. All right, bit of rice first, I reckon. Yep. It's like a burrito. Good cheese. Good sauce. Boom shankar. <laughs> Wrap your chops around that, bro. Another happy customer. Great glove. I thought the yellow light was supposed to keep them away. This is like next level horrific. It's a horror story. Okay, it's time to get this thing set up. Hadn't arranged it before I left. I uh, had a quick read uh, a couple of weeks ago and um, sort of knew what needed to happen. But uh, this morning's uh, nature called and I had to um, head bush and with a shovel and my backside got absolutely tapped by mosquitoes like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> so a bit of itch to carry through now. But um, So I think I'll get this sorted so I've got a more comfort comfortable experience uh, moving forward. 
Uh, so the plan is you've got to get this uh, coir peat, this stuff, um, natural product. I've got to break it up um, in a bucket or a tub or whatever and, and put some water on it and mix it around, let it absorb the water for... A, it says overnight in the book, but actually the back of the instructions on this one, it's got these from Bunnings. They um, they say to um, just do it for a couple of hours, so hopefully I can get it sorted today. And then that's got to go into the composting toilet, um, hold the hold area of the composting toilet. I'll show you that later when I get to it, but we'll just get this mixed up for now. Dust in this stuff's not too good for you apparently. I probably shouldn't be doing it like this. I should have just dropped the whole brick in and and uh, put water in there to make it expand. But anyway, so that's eight litres I need now, which is four of these. I'm just gonna use the lake water. That's it after about, I don't know, 10 minutes. I've been mixing it with a stick. Still a bit of moisture in there and still a few dry bits so I'll just let it sit for a few more hours and see see what happens and um, I'm be ready to deposit in the toilet hopefully so that's what we're dealing with that's the base unit the of the composting toilet it's got a rotational handle so every time you make a friendly deposit you need to spin that a few times and mix it through the um, coir so looking at the rough size of each one I reckon that's about right the amount I've got here so I need to half fill this so take a measurement of the depth so I've got 28 centimeters deep so I need to be 14 from the top when I'm finished this has probably got a bit more expanding to do but I'll just chuck it in and I can use the wheel to rotate it around a bit um, so we'll just start depositing and see how we go. Yeah, spot on. It's actually exactly the right amount, which is good to know um, maybe it'll expand more I'm not sure but uh, it works out too I just realized that the, the pivot point there for the, the rotational point for the handle is exactly halfway so that's where you fill it to obviously so that's good we'll get it in there and get using it so there's all the constituent parts of the composting toilet so saw me put that peat in before. Uh, this is the liquids uh, container for the urine and there's obviously the seat and the air plug goes in there. It comes with a bit of gear as well so these are called drop pads I think. Um, the idea is you have the, uh, the gate closed and you put one of those on there like that and uh, that catches stuff and then when you finish, you just open the gate and it falls through into the peat. Uh, that's the idea anyway. Um, the liquids, when you're sitting down, go through these holes here into the into that container there. When you're standing up, I'm told you need to aim for the, um, that point right there. And then it comes around and goes into the hole. That'll be interesting with teenage boys. They can't seem to hit a space as big as a basketball, um, let alone a spot like that. So they might be peeing in the bush, I'd reckon, or sitting down. So we'll put it all together. What I'm also going to do is um, got a tip from someone, and also I just noticed it was in the instructions as well. Um, you chuck some vinegar in there, just 50 mils each time, and it stops the stink um, from the urine, which is good. Um, and a spray bottle with 50-50 diluted with water and um, vinegar. I just give that a bit of a spray every time you're going to use it so nothing sticks. Um, easier to clean, apparently. So, yeah, we'll get it all assembled and then uh, give it a whirl. First in, best dressed. Um, whoever wants to have a go, I guess, make a mess of it. 
I forgot to mention also there's a lid that goes on this, a white disc with the screw, um, the butterfly screws on the outside to hold it on for when you're taking it away and emptying it, but we won't be doing that this trip, I didn't even bring it, so yeah, and that's the little cupboard, so I've got the vinegar, a bit of toilet paper, that spray bottle there, some other toiletry stuff, a bit deficient actually, had to go and grab some stuff from the local store before, uh, but you'll chuck the top on and away we go. Just doing the old bacon and eggs on the uh, new grill. First time it's been used. I tested it out, but I haven't actually cooked anything with it. <clears throat> so she's, um, it's pulling out at 1800 watts. So I'm down to 92%. Shut the solar, even now I'm facing the wrong direction, it's putting in 220 watts, which is about covering um, the DC system, which is the fridge is running on 12 volt. And there's a couple of chargers plugged in places. The rest is 240, so that's this discharging. Yeah, so I'll chuck a couple of uh, chicken nuts on there and then uh, fire up the $7 toaster from Kmart. I won't do them at the same time. Just don't want to pop things on the first go. And then we'll uh, be eating soon, I reckon. Crank the toaster. What's she pulling? 600 watts. So I've used about one or two percent of battery to cook that. I'll finish the toast off and see what I've used. Last and final test, it's going to get the induction cooker going. This is the last uh, kitchen implement that I haven't used on this trip, so we'll get that fired up. Um, going to do a bit of spag bowl, got a bit of mince there, some veggies to chop up. Get the frying pan on here and give it a crank up. Uh, running at 73%. I've set it down get it as low as 60 in the last couple of days um, when I was cranking lots of different 240 things, um, charging lots of batteries and doing other things. So... 73 is all right. Um, I've seen the solar get up to about 500 watts at times during the day today when the sun came out, which isn't bad given um, that's north and the roof's facing south, so it wouldn't have got maximum sun angle at all. Um, like even at the moment with the sun over there, very low on the sky and cloudy, it's still getting 80 or 90 watts in. So um, yeah, uh, next time I camp, I'll definitely try and pull up in the right direction and make it uh, work a bit better. So 73%, that's fine. We'll, we'll pull probably 10% out cooking dinner, maybe more. We'll check that and see how it goes. Um, but we'll get this cranking, get the meat cooked and the veggies cooked and then take that off and then chuck on a pot with some water for the pasta. Job done. Buzzing, starting to fry, pulling 1700, that's a 2000 watt element, I've got it set on about 8, there we go, she's already starting to fry, took about, I don't know, 10 seconds. I'm sure you've seen spaghetti bolognese cooked before, so I reckon I won't feel much more of this one, but let's throw the end product hopefully. Alright, ready to eat. I just can't believe how A, that took a long time, and B, how much battery used. Jesus Christ, 20% of the battery to cook that meal. So that induction is uh, hungry, power hungry. Yeah, it's a bit of a lesson here. We're down at 53% now, which means I'm going to have to 
be really focused on getting solar panels facing sun when I camp. Um, that'll I'll just go easy on it tomorrow. I won't use the induction and try and get it back up um, into a healthy spot, like 70% or something. Yeah, well, I was ready to tuck in. Oh, well, she's improved a bit today. Last night it was coming in sideways and I reckon 40 knots uh, gave the old uh, caravan awning attachment <laughs> structure that I made uh, a good test. I went and double roped all the poles over that side, parked the ute there, pulled the swags in underneath. It was absolutely hammering uh, and bitterly cold. I'd never, I couldn't feel my fingers, it was that cold. So anyway, we've got the beautiful sunshine in today. And the uh, yellow fields of canola are looking absolutely spectacular. I'll throw the drone up and uh, give you a look at this joint. I got the roof down. Uh, I'm trying to get a bit of charge back in. So I went easy on it yesterday. We cooked breakfast and a few cups of tea and things. And obviously the fridge and that was running um, pretty all day long. But uh, And the composting fan and a few other things off and on. And um, we pulled it down from like 48. I think we started the day out down to... I think it got as low as 42 just this morning with that roof shut and the solar cranking. It's putting about 400 watts in combined, which is, um, has already pushed it up to just under 50, like 48 or something. So a few more hours of that, hopefully without this cloud taking over and we'll get a, we'll get the charge back in. We're only going to stay another night. I think we're heading off tomorrow. It's meant to turn pretty foul again tomorrow afternoon. So yeah, we'll see how we go today. Try and get up to a bit more adventure and, um, and then uh, rock and roll. sandwich press and the microwave running at the same time. What are we pulling? 2800 on a 3000 watt inverter. Uh, you can push these to well over 3000 so pretty safe there I reckon. diesel heater sorted she's uh, pretty frozen it was absolutely freezing in the van sunrise was nice I tried to get some drone footage but apparently you need to charge the controller as well as the uh, drone itself so she uh, didn't like going up with no battery uh, that's the first attempt at a shower complete um, she ran that way a bit obviously because the pressure of the head is pointing that direction so I'm definitely going to need to get a shower screen that comes across here and goes down over the toilet and then any water that hits that will run to the sloped area towards the front it's all still it's draining now towards there it's a delicate balance because if you haven't got the floor level or slightly tilted back this way um, it won't f fall to there but then the actual drainage runs the other way so if you tilt it too far one way then it won't drain to the grey water tank and the other way it won't drain out of the shower so yeah, it's interesting. I might have to carry a sponge in here as well just to mop up those back corners, but there's been no leaks I can tell of. Anyway, when I look around, it doesn't seem to be anything coming through anywhere, which is good. I'll just check in the whole perimeters and make sure that there's nothing. We'll call it a reasonable success, but I'm going to set up that outdoor shower with a shower tent. I think it be lower stress with kids to have them showering outside than spraying water over my bed. So it hasn't, I pulled the doona back, it hasn't done anything there, which is good. Um, there's nothing here really. When I got out of the shower, I dripped a bit, but nothing came out here as well. So it's reasonably well contained. Call it a partial success. The hot water was marginal. I noticed that when I'd soap up and put hot water on myself, it was good. The water was hot enough. And then you let it sit for like a minute whilst you're lathering or whatever, or 30 seconds, and then and then reuse it. It uh, would... It would definitely cool down so the water in the pipe i guess would just be freezing cold so you get a blast of freezing cold water before the hot would come again which is not great in the climate i'm in right now but 
manageable. So anyway, yeah, we'll call it a partial success. A bit more work to do with shower screens and things. <clears throat> Just picked up one of these um, Kovix Australia uh, alarmed trailer locks. It's got a lithium battery in it. Um, you rattle it three times and she sends off a pretty loud screeching alarm apparently and uh, scares away the uh, potential thieves. So yeah, nice bit of kit. I got it from ProTrek. I'll put the details on screen uh, and in the uh, description as well. But yeah, really solid bit of gear, nice stainless. Uh, comes with keys to lock it uh, on the end here pulls so you can drop that pin out uh, an allen key as well for taking off the ball coupling and also a battery to set the alarm off um, i'm not going to alarm it right now i'll just um, fit it Yes, that's pretty much the end of the trip. Just got to pack the van down uh, and get out of here and get on the road. Uh, it's also the end of the build series. Uh, that's 20 parts, 20 episodes done and dusted right there. Hope you've enjoyed that uh, process of getting through the van build as much as I did. Uh, it's been very rewarding. I've actually enjoyed the photography bit and uh, filming of it and editing it. It's um, a new creative outlet for me and uh, it'll continue on. So the channel will evolve and develop as I've alluded to in a few of the uh, Q&A episodes and other things along the way, but um, you know there'll be a heap of modification type episodes. The van's not technically finished yet either. There's bits and pieces I need to, to do, fit out in kitchens and inside there's a bit more uh, trim work that I want to get done and a few other bits and pieces, but there's a lot of modifications I want to make to it as well. So you'll see those coming up in the uh, future episodes, one of them being the diesel heater install because I can't feel my toes right now and uh, need a bit of warmth in that van to wake up to in the mornings. Um, yeah, but lots of adventure blog blogging uh, will be on the channel as well. This trip I've actually recorded an episode uh, separately to the to the van set up and set down and use and so on that I'll um, put up on the channel soon. But also got plenty of trips planned coming up um, across the next few months and I'll try and make weekly episodes, although it's going to be probably a tall order from now on, but uh, I'll definitely have uh, ongoing content dropping in on the channel, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for everyone who's subscribed along the way and commented and liked and done all that great stuff. It's really helped the channel out. I'm really chuffed at the uh, success I've had with the channel and the amount of um, really positive feedback I get from everyone. So anyway, um, we'll get this van packed down, we'll get out of here, and I'll see you adventure vlogging somewhere soon on the channel. Cheers. Thank mm -hmm. you.